Hi everybody! This video is the first week, or sorry, the first lesson, set of lessons for Latin 2 Marcel's summer intensive course. I am looking forward to this. So um, your first assignment is just to review lessons 1 through 3. Rather, you're doing lessons 1 through 3, which are reviews from form 1, which you have already taken. So in the first lesson, you review the, the first and second declension nouns and adjectives and the numbers you know. So you already know first and second declension nouns. The first declension is mostly feminine, except for agricola, nauta, and poeta. And those go a, i, i, am, a, i, arum, is, as, is. Good enough. Okay, the second declension masculine is masculine and neuter. So one set is masculine, one set is neuter. And those go, the masculine go us, e, o, um, o, e, or, um, is, os, is. And the neuter go um, e, o, um, o, a, or, um, is, a, is. Okay. Then we have first and second declension adjectives. And these can be any of the three genders. So that um, good could be bonus, masculine, or bona, feminine, or bonum, neuter. Okay. Okay, then we have the numbers, and you studied these last year too. You have unus, duo, tres, quatuor, quinque, sex, septum, octum, novum, decim. Those are cardinal or counting numbers, okay? And then we have ordinal numbers, which are like first, second, third. Those are primus, secundus, tertius, quartus, quintus, sextus, septimus, octavus, nonus, and decimus, okay? Um, then you have some review vocab. You already know all of these. Um, let me check in here. Okay, there's the neuter rule. Um, so the nominative and accusative cases are the same and end in A in the plural. So that means that if the nominative of a neuter noun is bellum, then the accusative singular is also bellum, it matches. Same with the plural, if it's bella, then the plural accusative will be bella, okay? And a verb agrees with its subject in person and number. So a verb that is first person has to have the subject I, because, or it can have the subject we in the plural. A verb in the third person, if it's sunt, for example, it has to be, the subject has to be third person and plural, so it has to be they. Or a, 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 a noun that means they, so like legati, the lieutenants, plural, third person, okay? Um, an adjective agrees with its noun in gender, number, and case, and may precede or follow the noun. So an adjective in Latin, the way we tell that it goes with its noun is that it has the same gender, number, and case as its noun. Simple enough. A predicate nominative follows a linking verb, renames the subject, and is in the nominative case, whereas a predicate adjective follows a linking verb, describes its subject, and is in the nominative case. So examples of these, um, Audrey is a teacher. In this sentence, Audrey is a subject, is is a linking verb, and teacher is a word referring back to Audrey. And since it's in the predicate, we call it the predicate nominative. And then a predicate adjective would be Audrey is tired. They're tired is the predicate adjective. It's still referring to Audrey, but since it's a noun, we don't call it a predicate nominative, we call it a predicate adjective. But for both of them, they're in the nominative case, and they match in number with the subject of the sentence. Okay, the genitive singular of a first declension noun is I, A-E, and the end of a second declension noun is I, or E, that's how it sounds. Um, okay, so that's all review for you. Moving on to lesson two really quick. In this lesson, you review the second declension ER and IR nouns. These are vir, puer, 
Augur, uh, Vesper, etc. And those, the only difference really is that from the second declension regular nouns is that in the nominative singular they end in er or ir, but they're the same in all the other cases. So vir goes viri, viro, virum, viro, etc. Exactly how you expect. Okay, then you have some vocab. Um, let's see, most second declension nouns, masculine nouns, end in us in the nominative singular. But there are some that end in er and one that ends in ir. Those are the ones we just talked about. Except for the nominative singular, these nouns have the same case endings as all second declension masculine forms. The er nouns are all masculine. These nouns show why it is important to always learn the genitive singular. The nominative singular of most declensions can vary, but the genitive singular never varies. The genitive singular identifies the declension of the noun and provides the stem. So that's important to remember. Okay. Um, okay, looking at the genitive singular of puer, vir, and vesper, you see that the stem is the same as the nominative singular form, okay? Looking at the genitive singular of auger, colter, magister, and liber, you see that the genitive singular form drops the letter E. So some words um, change from, for example, liber, book, to libri without an E. We drop the E in the genitive, but some, Keep the E. For example, liberi means children, but in the genitive it's liberorum, and we don't drop that E in between the um, B and the R. Okay? You just have to memorize which ones are which for those. Okay, and finally, uh, lesson three. Second declension ER adjectives. So just like we have. Um, ER nouns in the second declension, we have some adjectives like that. And those look like integer, integra, integrum. Um, and you know how to decline those already. I won't make you listen to me do it again. Most first and second declension adjectives are of the type bonus atum. There are some, however, that have ER masculine endings instead of us. Since nouns and adjectives with the ER ending either drop or retain the final E, the dictionary form must be fully written out. That means on quizzes and stuff, you should write the whole word instead of the shortened word with the dash and the ending only. Okay, study the, you'll have to study these vocab words that are on page 14. Let's see. Okay, let's review this grammar concept. So there's the dative of indirect object. The dative case is that third case in your declension charts. Okay, an indirect object is commonly found with the verbs of giving or telling. Examples of giving and telling are verbs do, naro, nuntio, and demonstro. So in English, the direct sorry, the indirect object can be expressed in two ways. One, by word order, the indirect object precedes the direct object. So, Mary gave Mark a rose. There, Mark is the indirect object. That's to the to whom or for whom uh, the thing is given, the verb happens. Or you can tell by a preposition, for a prepositional phrase, beginning with two or four. So Mary gave a rose to Mark. So in both of those cases, that's an indirect object in Latin. The main thing to remember about that is that the indirect object answers the question to whom or for whom. Just remember that and you'll be good. Okay. Make sure there's nothing else I want to say here. Okay. So what you need to do before Wednesday, before we meet on Zoom, is you should watch this video, which you've already done if you're listening to me, um, and you should study the pages that I will have attached. You have some vocab, you have quite a few vocab to review, but most of them are, are review, they're not new. Um, and 
read the read your grammar pages make sure you understand as much as possible everything prepare um ask me any questions you need to um on our zoom meeting and don't be intimidated we moved really fast to those three review lessons so don't be scared if you have if you were confused at parts or if you didn't follow at parts just do your best to get a good reading of those pages and understand as much as possible. Um, let's see. I do recommend strongly that you print out the pages that I attached to Canvas for this lesson and annotate them. And I don't know if you know what annotating is, but it's to take um, in various ways to take pens or crayons or highlighters and mark up your pages in ways that help you remember uh, remember things. So mark something you don't understand with a question mark or highlight something that seems important and come back to it, things like that. So I encourage you to do that. Even if you already have the book that we're working from, it can be helpful to mark things up and people don't always wanna mark up their textbook. So, um, okay, I think that's enough for today. God bless you and I'll see you on Wednesday.